Hi kids, once again, it's Mike Kelly here for uh, AnimatorsForum.com. I thought today I would uh, tell you a little bit about uh, a thing I showed off briefly last time, uh, very quickly, and, and show you how you can do this. It's basically a, a way of using smart bones to animate the um, the the, sh the layer order. But um, but before we before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Z depth. And uh, what the heck it is, because uh, some of you may not may not know. Uh, there's three dimensions in Anime Studio, even though it's a mostly a two-dimensional program. I'm not going to talk about the three-dimensional, uh, you know, drawing or shaping aspects of it, but just the the three dimensions as as they're used for the two-dimensional art. You have your X and your Y positions. The X position is from left to right, so you know, just like we read. Uh, here are smaller x, greater x, and the y position is up and down. So the the taller the position, the higher the y, the lower the the lower the y. So and you can see that here's a here's a layer here, and you can see the layer positions. And so if I move it over to the right, the x will uh, decrement slightly. So you can see it's minus 0.54. It's very small uh, segments here, minus 0.8. Uh, and if I go in this direction, now it's 0.14 and the more I move over here 0.7 so you can see it doesn't there's not a lot uh, you don't have to, to increment these by a lot if you matter if I would put a 5 in there the the shape would go zooming clear off to the side here and then in y position if I go up here you see it's 0.28 and if I go down it's minus 0.50 so further go down so anyway those are the uh, x and y positions the z position is the depth of this shape and what does that mean? Well, that means that actually it exists on the screen, but it also ha exists in a, in a plane, another plane of, of depth on this. And the easiest way to show you that is to bring in some, uh, some other, um, I'm going to bring in, let's see, this thing here. This is a built-in file, or part of the uh, content library of Anime Studio. So it isn't drawn very well, and it isn't drawn to the right dimensions, but it, I just want to use it as an example. If I, if I go, if I click here to the layer here, uh, the sky layer that I've called it, and I want to, and I'm in the moving layers, and I can move it around this way. But if I want to move it forward and back, you'll notice you can hold the Alt key to move it forward and back. So there's forward, and there's back. Well, what does that mean? So I'm going to move it all the way back for you to take a look at something. Now we're going to go to the camera position, this little rotate or orbit camera position, and now you can see that I actually pushed that sky layer back behind those other layers that I brought in that are all mostly on the same layer. Actually, they're all exactly on the same layer. So that's that's what I, that's the Z depth there. And you might say, well, what good is that? And that's, that's a good thing to ask. Uh, the reason that's good is that you can get some interesting effects. Not only can you get, um, uh, you can order things uh, by where they are in, in the, uh, palette here. If I bring this palette over, you can see how the palette. So in other words, we all know that within this group, the foreground is above the trees, is above the hills, above the mountains, and, the, and up above all this layer. But we can also sort things by the depth. And I'm going to show you how that works but for a moment. But let me show you another uh, advantage of using depth. So if I go to this uh, sky layer here, and I bring it a little bit more forward, and I'm going to go to the foreground, which is this foreground tree, and I'm going to bring it you know, very close to the camera. These background trees, I'm going to bring them a little back further, and the hills, bring them back not not as far, and then the uh, mountains way back here, I'll bring those back. So if we if we rotate now, you can see I've got the layers there, and actually the sky needs to go back further, because the sky is usually behind the mountains. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so we'll, we'll move that sky back as well um, by doing the uh, positioning here. Oops, move it all the way back there. Now I'm going to also size it bigger so that it, there we go. So now I've got those layers. So you might say, well, what, what good does that do me now? Well, if I move the camera with those layers uh, moved back and forth, then the camera is going to get what's known as a parallax effect, which is you can actually see that, that shapes now, and this is how it happens in real life, shapes actually move differently depending upon how close they are to the camera. So this foreground tree, you see, is moving quicker across than the background trees, which are still moving quicker than the mountains, which are still moving quicker than the far mountains or the hills, whatever. So that's that's one advantage of, of having layers in your, in your uh, system. But the other advantage is you can also uh, sort by layers within the uh, within an object and that you can get the same kind of effect that you would get if you uh, move layers around. 
And the reason we want to do that is, as of yet, smart bones don't have the ability to uh, reorder layers. And uh, hopefully that'll change someday. But in the meantime, if it doesn't change, since it's, uh, you can fake it with, uh, <laughs> with the use of, uh, of smart bones and using the, the Z depth position. So what I've got here is my gesture. I'm going to turn off his hat for a moment. I don't want to think about his hat. Um, first of all, in order to do this, you have to, on your group layer, in this particular case, the, the layer that all these layers are underneath, the, the parent layer for those layers, you have to turn on sort layers by depth. Okay, so I've got that turned on here. It's number one. Then number two, you've got to put depth on your layers uh, that then would make those, uh, you know, appear... Uh, in front of each other or behind each other and you don't want them to be very very much so for example if we go to this this bones uh, this forearm layer and go to this uh, you'll see i have it's at 0. 0.0004 a very very tiny increment and the hands layer is at 3.0003 the bicep is 0. 0.0002 the head is 0 0.001. I think you get the idea that these, these layers are sorted in very small increments. The reason you want to do that is, you might have noticed that from the other example, when you move a layer in the Z depth, it also gets smaller or bigger depending upon how far it is. And you don't want to, we don't want to muck up the way the, the, or the size of these are. So by using these very tiny increments here, uh, we get, still get the sorting of the Z depth, but we don't screw up the actual uh, size of the layers. So what, what I've done is I've created a smart bone. We're going to go to that smart bone action here. So we go to the bones and we go to, and I made it for the, uh, it's just for the upper arm, the upper, uh, this, I'm sorry, the uh, upstage arm. Uh, so what I have, let me show you how it works first before we, before we uh, show you how it's constructed. If I, if I take that, this upstage arm, you notice it's behind the body, which is as it would be. But if I move this, if I rotate this arm upward, and then I rotate the forearm in front, it takes a little while to, to kind of there. You have to kind of move it off that, that, uh, that first key so it gets all reorganized. But you notice now it's in front of the body. So you see, I can go up there, and it's in front, and so is the hand in front of the body. And then if I move here, and I readjust that arm, and now I go here, move the arm even up, now it's in front of the head and it takes a little bit of time before it to re gets yeah there so then we come back here lower it down again it just takes a while to reset itself there but see you notice so now it's so there's the front and there it's behind that's how that works isn't that cool front and behind okay so how does that how does that how is that done well the answer is pretty simple. Uh, the body is, the torso is on a particular uh, level. In this particular case, I just made the Z level zero for the torso to make, keep it simple. And the upstage forearm, uh, I have, uh, I'm going to go to that. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the um, to the bones layer and then to the upper, the bicep layer is what does it. It's this bicep action. And so what happens on the action is, it goes to the forearm, I'm sorry, the upper forearm, and you'll see there's keys here. So what happens is as this uh, bicep bone rotates, it puts a hold key there, so it holds that, that particular depth. These are, this is the layer translation. So what's, what it's doing here is, is as soon as it gets to this point right here, it puts this layer now, it moves this layer. So if I click on the layer for the translation, you'll see the, uh, well, you can see it up here, it's 0 0.002, so now it's on top of that torso layer. So behind it, it's 0 0.001, and then it's 0 0.002 to be on top of it. And that's how it's done. So, and that's the only bone I have to do it on, is the bicep bone, because uh, that's, when it moves up like this, uh, this, that would be the only way you could put this arm in front of it. You know, if, you, if we went back to the um, to the actual main line to look at the animation, you'll notice that, you know, in order to get your hand in front, you, you'd want to raise up your arm up to the side. If you, if you try it in, in real life, you'll see what I mean. You can't, you can't, when your arm is, you know, at the side of yourself, you can't, you can't, uh, 
when it's behind there like that, you can't suddenly bring your arm in front without at least moving your arm up a little bit. And so that's what happens here is he moves his, he moves this bicep up and then he can move his arm in front like that. And then when he wants to move it back, he just, he just lowers it down and it goes in back. So anyway, that's one thing you can do with smart bones is that you can control the Z depth of layers. And if you set it up this way, then you could get some interesting effects. That's not the only effect that you can get that way, but that is a way of getting around one of the drawbacks of smart bones, which is that they don't have the ability to reorder layers. And maybe in version 10, that will change. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but who knows how long that'll take to come out. And in the meantime, you guys can do this sort of stuff in this version. So see you on our forum. Take care.